All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get ready for experiment one. So we're going back to the syllabus, and I got to find it. USB drive, no, launch meetings, that's it. And waiting for this to disappear. Three, two, one. Nice. Touche. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Not disappearing. Yeah, I know. I prefer not to. <laughs> okay. Here we go. We're on the syllabus. And it says week one. Remember, our syllabus is for multiple versions of the textbook. I'm going to make which edition you have irrelevant. So where you see page numbers, I'm going to show you where I got them from so you know that week to week what to do. All you really need to know is what experiment am I doing this week? Okay? And then I'll tell you what to do from that. But right now, we're not doing an experiment. We're doing course information uh, from the syllabus. And lab procedures and safety, there's an assignment for that that's, on, that's near the syllabus. But when we get ready for experiment one, experiment one, experiment number is column two. We're in experiment one, measurement of physical property. Keeping in mind, we're not going to do the density portion of that experiment. So it says there's reading here. Forget about what pages it says, because you probably don't have this edition. Let's look at the book. So I hope it goes to this screen. I'm not taking chances. I'm stopping share. And then I'm going to share this way. OK. So I've got this from my uh, textbook. And it's in the introductory part of the book. And it reminds us of all the parts for an experiment. You're going to have another reminder of this right in, in the Moodle, where the first week I've done everything for you. So you really don't have to look at this because I've got all the parts laid out like I want them for you. But you're always going to have the date, the title, the purpose, the reaction scheme. Okay. So do they have that? They have the date. The title, uh, they don't say the purpose here, but this is the purpose. Three, purpose, three. So you're preparing diphenyl succinate. Okay, cool. And a little fancy stuff there. And then I grab the next part. There's a lot of stuff missing, four, five, six. Ah, they're not in order. Uh, there's five. A data table. You need a data table. You say, how the heck am I going to know what goes in the data table? This is the easiest part. The data tables have been done for you. You are going to copy them. OK? All right. And then this part here is an actual procedure. You would not put this in your notebook before you showed up to lab. But let's look at their wording, because you you have to learn how to write like this. So in a three mil conical vial, that's a, a vessel containing a magnetic spin vane and equipped with a reflux condenser, protected by a calcium chloride drying tube. Look at the, this word, were, were placed. What tense is that? Past, it has to be written in the past tense. It doesn't say who did this work anywhere here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is from a, a, a lady or a gentleman's lab notebook. Their name is on the front. They did the work, unless they say otherwise. And if there's work here in your lab that you did not do, just say who did it. Just tell me the truth. We have to know who to ask to reproduce your experiment from your notebook. Okay? And we want to just use your notebook. A good lab notebook means from your lab notebook, I can redo the experiment because you told me exactly what you did. And I should be able to redo what you did. This is good science. So wording is going to be a little awkward at first. That's why the first two and a half procedures 
I've basically done for you. It's a new game. It's a new teacher, new lab class. This is true for all, all students in science. They're always nervous about their new lab class for good reason, because every teacher expects slightly different things, right? Okay, so that's why we're doing this video. And don't worry, but in, the, in this video, you will have an exact look at what your lab notebook will look like before you show up next week, okay? So I think we're gonna stop, look, oh, it's only two pages. Because I didn't snip the rest, that's why. That's over here. There you go. What else you got here? We had six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I might as well snip that too, since we're here. Uh, snippy tool has disappeared. There he is. Grab these. Put that in our document. I will post this document. It'll be available with the video. So this is the procedure continued here. And you can't read about seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I think you can figure that out. Signatures at the end, huh? So you're gonna sign. Your partner's gonna sign. If you don't have a partner, that's gonna make you my partner. We don't know who's not right today, who's gonna be my partner. But we have an odd number, so I will have a partner today. And I will sign if I'm your partner. Your partner will sign if they're your partner. And you need a date. And you'll notice something up here. Eight. What is eight? Eight says references to product or procedure, if any. What this means is if this experiment was not your idea, which is basically your whole semester. This is an introductory organic lab course. You're not inventing experiments yet. You need a few more lab courses before you're there, okay? So you have to acknowledge whose ideas you're using. So that reference you saw here is not gonna be this reference. It's gonna be your textbook every time. And tell me what page numbers they told you to do things from, you know? Experiment one, it tells you what to do. Hey, that's that's the people whose idea the experiment is, right? Okay, every time you need that. And I don't need it there, it can be anywhere. I am not big on order. Order, completeness, yes. I don't need the exact same order as they have here. Don't tell me my don't tell my librarian friends. I have some librarian friends, and <laughs> you should give a proper citation with everything in the right order. And they have a good reason for that, right? If it's systematic, it makes it easier for everybody to find the information. Okay, a lot of rambling. Sorry. Uh, so what's our goal today? Figure out how to get ready for experiment one. And I told you there's a way you can get around those page numbers. So these page numbers right here. Okay. So what you do is you go find experiment one. We got it. Experiment one. No, we didn't find it. It's here. It's here. You see that? Experiment one. This is from your notebook. Forget it. Forget about page numbers. You know, in, in this book, it's roughly like page 100, chapter six. But the important thing is it's experiment one. So you got to read everything from here before lab, please. You need to know what you're doing before you show up. It's for safety is the main reason and, and to be a good student. I mean, you get more out of lab if you know ahead of time what to expect. So that's part of the pages you're reading. It's on the syllabus. It, it'll give you the page numbers if you have the right edition. Right here, it tells you other pages you need to read. Do you see them? Right when you look at experiment one, later on, you're going to see background reading for experiment one. Read it. It's your assigned reading. It's also on the syllabus in the table. So if you don't have the syllabus, all you need is all, to know is what experiment you're doing, which is on the syllabus. But you, know, you, need, you need to know. It doesn't go in order. It does not go one, two, three, four, five. No. 
goes one, then three, then four, then eight. Okay, whatever's on the syllabus. Speaking of which, there's experiment one doing week two. That's next week. Week three, experiment three. Week four, also experiment three, but it's 3B and 3D. Distillation is an important purification technique. We take two weeks on it. So a little reminder, we had reading to do, experiment one, but now you know where these page numbers come from. That was the main experiment from this edition. Chapter six, just go to the chapter six and find that right experiment. And you, you know those pages right away. And immediately as you start reading it, the book told you these pages, the background reading right there, background in parentheses. Okay? So figuring out what pages, always easy. These are questions from the textbook. And I'll show you those, I hope. And there's other questions here, but uh, there are the questions that I was telling you about on the syllabus. And we're going to snip those. There's your questions. That's at the uh, end of the reading of experiment one, everybody. And we're just going to put it here. Uh, that is one source of questions that will be on the midterm and final. One source. There's going to be two lists of sources of questions. They're identical lists. One on the syllabus, one on our main notes page at Moodle that tell you the four sources of questions for lab report. And you know one of them right now. Lab syllabus list has this. Right? End of experiment one, chapter six. Has that. Okay? And there you go. So three of those were due. Back to the syllabus. Okay. So we got that. We're reading all that, background reading. This is a different edition of the book, but you know how to find what pages are for you. Same story every week. Got that. Let's see. Going to the end of this table. Ah, yes. What are you gonna do before lab starts? You're gonna read. Just talked about that, didn't we? You're gonna do steps one through five outlined on page 31 in your lab textbook. This work must be checked by the instructor before you're allowed to begin the experiment. Okay. Do steps one through five outlined on whatever page numbers. That's the list of things, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, that's in your lab notebook. They have circles on them and everything. Okay. So the list was here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five before lab. Do not panic. Experiment one. You say, I don't know how to get that set up. What? Experiment one. Let's look around. Cross your fingers. We got the main two, four, three here. And let's look around for maybe helpful information about setting up our lab notebook for experiment one. Somebody yell when you think I've, I've uh, run by it. Oh, 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 experiment one preparation. I mean, that's pretty clear, right? And it's in the syllabus area. It's like, right? Syllabus, right? Crush fingers. You must. Uh, oh, that's good stuff. So get the textbook. You know what this document's actually for? Not you. <laughs> this is the one for people who missed today. I will be telling them to read this document. It's got a lot of, it's basically doing this video. <laughs> okay. All right. So 
Let's keep looking, shall we? I want I want one that specifically tells me what I'm doing with my lab notebook. Okay, we haven't found it yet. Online book notes, an appendix. I don't know, chapter ten is the appendix. Lab notes. Sent, whoa, wait. Section two. Do you see it? I think we found it. Sample notebook set up for experiments one and three. Oh, I opened a new window. Okay, this is it. Guys in the way. Oh, six, yeah. I don't know if Dr. Yakel ever figured out he was my lab partner before he retired, but he's been on there since 2006. <laughs> okay. So I got, you're going to copy this. Experiment one only, you copy this. Okay. It's got your, your please don't copy my name and your partner's name. So look, I got the purpose right there. I got the scheme. Oh, there's no reaction scheme because we're not doing reaction. But I always want something for the reaction scheme section. If you're not doing a, a reaction in this class, typically we're just analyzing molecules. I need pictures of the molecules we're analyzing. That's what that's for. If there's a reaction being done, I need all the reactants and products and solvents because I need to know what, what's present. Just looking quickly at your reaction scheme. So, hey, you're gonna copy these four chemicals which we're gonna be testing. Just copy with their names. Copy this data table. You know you need a data table, right? Textbook doesn't have this data table. Experiment three, four, five, six, seven, every other experiment all semester has this data table in the textbook. I will remind you of that shortly. The only experiment that doesn't have the data table, experiment one, and it's here in these notes available to you. You're copying this in your notebook. Do it tonight. Just do it. Okay. But you have a little bit of research to do. Just those single stars. Single stars. And I would prefer to use this link. They bought this link in, uh, at, on campus for teaching room. I don't know why. It, it, it comes up blank for us. But at home, it works fine for me. It's a nice link, acros.com. Please use it. We can't use it in this room. Wiki is also a nice link for chemical. You don't see teachers say anything good about Wiki usually, right? Chemist check wiki on a fairly regular basis and you'll see the format is kind of the same for every chemical they, they have a kind of a standard format that they the chemists have adopted and the end the data is good so you can use wiki for data if you need it i'm going to go there now and i'm going to look at methanol and i need its refractive index do you remember that so we've got our dude michael smith that's not the Michael Smith I know. Uh, what do we got? We're looking up methanol, right? All right, you got pictures. Usually everything you need is on the right side. And you don't need pictures, but you're gonna need some data. And we needed the refractive index, remember that? Does anybody see it yet? Properties, that's it. Uh, have we seen it yet? Oh, where is it? Three days around from thermochemistry. Three up. Oh, there it is. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, look at that. It's got a nice picture of what refractive index means. I like that. Light bends going through different substances that are different than air, right? Okay. And there you would copy this into your lab notebook right here. 1.3, well, all of it, 3141. Got it? So just three rep, three, uh, four research items. Refractive index of methanol. This one is for the boiling point of heptane, the second one here. Uh, you can't look up unknowns because you don't know. Uh, acetanilid melting point you're going to look up, caffeine melting point. Not a lot of research, ladies and gentlemen. Not a lot of research. 
and good practice using wiki. So you're going to have that in your notebook before you show up, right? Stop at the end of the data table. All of the above is to be done before the lab period begins. I will check this right at the beginning of the lab. I will sign it. If it's done by 8.10, it gets a signature. Oh, if it's done by 8.10 and it's here with you, it gets a signature. If it's not done by 8.10 or you are not here, it doesn't get a signature. And I got to say this, 8.10 means 8.10.0.0. I had a student, she walked in at 8.10.45, said, wait, still 8.10. <laughs> she was right. I had to say, I got to remind students, 8.10 is 8.10. Zero. Military time. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Uh, you can't do these until we do the experiment, the experimental values, but have a spot ready for them. And moving back to the syllabus if we can. Uh, I think it's over here. And yeah. So sample notebook set up for experiment one and three. I think we have that open somewhere. Nope. We had it open. Where was it? This one? It went left. This one? Different tab. See, I need my student. It's over here. It's not here. Is it? That's it? I don't know. I'm here. I want to go to the soap. It's here. That's it. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not that fun. Okay, we're back to the syllabus. That's all I want. Okay. So what are you doing? You're reading the experiment background and procedure. You got those page numbers. Where'd you get those page numbers from? Well, it's on the syllabus, but basically, if I know I'm doing experiment one, I'll be reading the main experiment one stuff in chapter six. Make sure your book is in chapter six. Maybe they've changed the chapters. But the main part of the book is experiments. Okay, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six in order. And uh, how do you know what pages are the background reading? You'll be reading experiment one and like the second paragraph says, you should know this topic from the background and another topic like melting points and boiling points for factive index. It always reminds you about background techniques you're gonna be using. Read those, you need to know those. You're gonna have your data table ready. Uh, there won't be pre-lab questions unless we start seeing students coming in late on a regular basis. If students start coming in late on a regular basis, we will all have pre-lab questions. They are very easy, They were, just, but only people here on time get to do them. And they're, they will become a mandatory part of your lab report grade. We haven't done them in six years. Please don't make me start. Okay. So, no pre lab questions, right? Everybody here on time? Yeah. Can I use your name? Yeah. Miss Hamoud says you better be here on time, and I'm with her. Okay. Get instructor signature in your notebook. Yeah, you better be here at 810 for that. Now, during the lab, of course, you're going to do the experiment. You're, I'm going to talk about technique stuff and stuff first. Do some demonstration of what you're going to do. And then you're going to go and do your stuff and do the experiment and record your procedure. So, procedure. Done during lab, right? Uh, looking for the main. Yay, good. What about a sample notebook procedure? Just tell me when you think I may be getting close. Yeah. Sample notebook setup. Maybe that's got it. Procedure is part of your notebook, right? Anybody know where I have that open? That's it. <laughs> okay. I bet there's a procedure here. 
Oh, the procedure reference. Do you remember that, what that was for? Where you got your ideas? Okay. You're going to put the title, authors, publishers, city, year, and pages for your textbook and say, use these words here. Uh, where is it? That no, doesn't have it. They had the wording in the, uh, when they showed you steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The wording this procedure was adapted from. I'm probably not going to be able to find that too quick. Okay. Hey, experiment three below is a typical is uh, uh, know, lab procedure. Here, there's the experiment one lab procedure. It's very short. Normally, a procedure tells you step by step what was done, right? You saw that first procedure. There were some details in there. You, in a three mil conical vial was added, diethyl succinate, stuff like that. There's nothing details here at all. It just says a micro scale melting point. Ladies and gentlemen, a micro scale melting point is a standard procedure with many steps. You will learn how to do it exactly right. Starting today, we hope, okay? And when you have a standard procedure, like a test, you just properly name the test and say that was done, okay? Was done. In fact, when you're learning how to do procedures, you should have a mantra. You, you, you know what a mantra is? Like a saying that you say over and over again? It's a very easy saying. This was done. Just remember those three words. You got to describe the this, the was, is past tense, right? And done. Okay? And never anything personal. I started hinting at that earlier. What does personal mean? It means I measured five mils into the, the reaction vial. Don't say that. Five mils was measured into the reaction vial. That's better. No personal, no I, no he, no she, no we, no they. It's called passive voice. It's very, it, it removes personal comments from the feeling, which means, you know, remove it from your thinking. Because scientists, it's not about personal, it's about knowledge. Okay? Experiment three, you've got the procedure here for later. You're not doing experiment three, but look at all the detail. Wow, there's a lot more going on, right? Not really. It's just distillation's not standard. There's you can do a distillation that's this big, and you can do a distillation that's as big as the Amoco refinery. Okay, that those are distillations going on. The Amoco refinery. You want to see those? Just go down uh, I-75 yeah. towards Flat Rock. Okay, so here we go. Uh, what do you got? We're doing the lab now. We recorded our procedure. That's where we're at right now, right? And I think we're on, is it here? Yeah, record our procedure as it is performed. What are steps seven through 10? Let's go look. Characterizations of product. That's, hey, the melting point was done and the result has to be somewhere. Hey, did you remember you left a column in your table for experimental values? So you would write down the melting point was taken and is recorded in the data table. Good. So that's seven. Uh, eight reference to products or procedure, if any. Procedure reference. This procedure was adapted from and you give a textbook reference. There's even a sample textbook reference somewhere at Moodle. It's a document called proper referencing. If I tell you it exists, it does. So proper referencing is at Moodle. You can find it with that title. Uh, analytical and spectral data, uh, spectral data. We'll be doing spectroscopy starting in the second half of the course. So you're also going to have spectra, infrared spectra attached to your lab. And 10, we talked about signatures, right? You, partner, me. 
at the end. Just one. And there's our list again. Okay, and I'm signing. And what about after? You're going to fill out your lab report form. What the heck is that? We have to find the lab report form. Uh, ah. <laughs> okay. Ah, I think I found it. You got to look uh, low on that screen. You found it? Yeah. I hope me jumping between screens is getting caught on the video. Uh, we'll find out. Okay. You see it down here? Report forms? Yeah. You see notes too? Let's go to report forms because it came up. They're all in one document here. Getting breezy here. Saw it open this time. Yeah. Hey, experiment one. There you go. So that is the cover page for your report. Either print it and write on it and get ready to scan it. Or if you can, some of you guys got the technology wizardry going on, you can write on your computer, which is cool for me too. You know? Anyway, that's going to be page one, however you make it happen. Okay? And it looks like... Uh, when you see a star, you're going to be putting your experimental data. And when you see reference values, you're going to be looking up stuff in these books. Yes, books. Those books. These. We'll show you where these books are later today. And there's online versions of two out of three. Okay. What else? So all the experimental stuff's on the left. There's this big read this that's not so big. I kind of snuck it in after the fact. Confession. This document's so old, 1998, that I don't have the original. So I think I just took the original. I had a version online. And I snipped it. The snip didn't exist. And I used paint. And then I added this comment because students were forgetting this all the time. Read this. Don't forget to answer all questions regarding melting point, boiling point, and refractive index encountered during the text description of experiment one. I'm going to snip that. Try to get the old exclamation point and everything. And I'm going to paste it into this. And then I'm going to go find an example of these questions. During the text description of experiment one, that's the main reading in chapter six. Okay. So I think I have some of that. If I, whoa, where'd Word go? I closed Word. Yeah. I'm looking for the text description in chapter six. Yeah. I haven't snipped it yet. It's here. Chapter six. Ah, here is chapter six. This is for experiment one. You got to trust me. Uh, I'm going to go until I find a question. I found a whole bunch of questions. Snip. And I go from here. And put it here. Three, four, five. This technique is used for two down one. Where the same line. Okay. See three and four below. They are clearly questions. And just to, to make you a little more comfortable, this is the only time this semester where you will 
find questions embedded in the lab description. So this is a one-time deal, okay? So that's what the exclamation is. And I got that from the textbook. You'll see those. So reminder, only do the questions from the melting point boiling point and refractive index section of experiment one. Yeah, that's good notice, huh? And what do we got? Moving back to here. And I don't even know if these are bouncing back and forth for everybody. This could be a wasted video. Yeah. So then lab report cover page you're talking about, that's going to be the first page of our lab report, but we're not going to be able to fill that out until after the lab report. Correct. The, he was asking about lab report form is the cover page. And it's not due. In fact, I haven't said anything about due dates, have I? It's very important. A separate assignment in the lab report that was on the syllabus? No, no, it's that is it. Um, there's submission areas for the labs. I think it's section 12. Shall we verify that? So we're going over here, and I'm going to do a stop share and then a reshare, just in case this thing's been jump not moving between screens the way I want to. And I hope we're here. Good. And we're looking for. I forgot what we're looking for already. 12, yeah, thank you. Uh, that's not it, this is it. Co we're not in COVID-19 makeup scheduling. Okay, fall 2020, that's, I'm gonna edit that. It will be section 12, but this will now read fall 2023. So yes, we do submit uh, section 12 is now winter 23. We'll go there. So I don't believe these due dates are correct yet. Labs, uh, labs are never due on Monday. So none of these is correct. I'll be fixing them. I'll tell you the lab, the policy is very straightforward. Labs are always due Thursday, one full week after the lab has been completed. I got good news for you. Next week, when we do experiment one, the major part of experiment one, we don't quite finish. That means the lab is not due the next week. We're going to finish the week after. We're going to need like a 45 minutes of week three to finish experiment one. That means it's not due week three. It's due a whole week after. Got it? And I'll continually remind you. And I will fix the section 12 due dates, which will be another reminder. Okay, so lab due date, Thursdays, one full week after the lab is due to section 12. Okay, Thursdays, Thursdays. They're submitted online. That way you don't have, to, Tuesdays are a long day. You're already four hours in the lab and I want you to spend a little more time on your own to get your labs ready. So yeah, I give you a week and two days, right? So minimum of a week, right? Okay, where do we leave off? We're getting our lab notebook set up, right? Yeah, we finished the report forms and now we gotta figure out what is a full lab. Okay, back to the syllabus. We're back here, Moodle. What is a full lab? You gonna tell us what is a full lab? How about uh, this? This isn't the syllabus, is it? No. Where I got the syllabus? That is the syllabus. Yeah, it's gonna come up. That's that's why I'm doing this. Answer the lab questions outlined on the previous page, on the back of your. You don't have to do it on the back of a report form. Anywhere you want. You may staple extra pages onto the form if necessary. 
Okay, good. You got anything about a ah? Oh, you got anything about a full lab here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. That'd be sad if it's not here. Labs are due one full week. Yeah. Scanning, cam scanner. I don't use that anymore. I use Adobe. I'm a little sad. The notes page is what we need. And you'll see why. We don't have the notes page. Let me hear. Notes. Notes for Chem 243 experiments. I got it. Video links. Oh, boy. Okay, we got a lot of notes. I call this document here the main notes page. So when I ask you to go to the main notes page, you go to the notes area, notes area at Moodle, and the main notes page is here. And it's very important. You'll see right away why it's so important. Because it has a reminder of the sources for questions for Chem 243 reports. That's why it's so important. Okay? So you already saw that list on the syllabus, right? You uh, saw sometimes there's reminders on the report forms of questions, right? Read this. Remember that little S? It was on the report forms. It reminded you. Sometimes there's a question straight up on the report form. I think you'll do that one, right? If you see a question on the report form, you're just going to do it. These notes pages have questions. You better know this notes pages are here or else you're throwing away uh, like one or two points every experiment. Let's look for some questions, shall we? You see any questions yet? There's two questions down there, you see them? Practical lab questions used to be three. Got rid of two because we don't have two types of refractometers anymore. So there you go. So what are our sources for questions for lab reports? We got the syllabus list, 6-2, 6-3, 6-5 or something like that. And then what do we have? We had the uh, notes pages. This is this, the notes pages had two more questions. The report form reminded us there was more in your notebook, this or textbook this time, right? It said, read this during the description of your textbook. Email questions for experiments three, four, and eight. Do we worry about that just yet? No, but there is a section at Moodle with just email questions in it when you're ready to look at that. And trust me, when we get to the port portion in experiment three, we're gonna actually do one of the questions together. So you'll know I'm talk where, what I'm talking about. And that's that. So have we got a full lab yet? yet? Oh, what is a full lab? There's a reminder right here. Oh, this notes page is very important, isn't it? You're going to put the report form as the cover. You're going to put the answers to all the questions here, right? And you're going to copy pages from your lab mode, which means you've taken pictures. That's it. Are we good? I think that's a full lab. Now, the last thing I need to do is tell you how easy it is for the rest of the semester because your textbook took care of all that hard work that me and Dr. Yakel did together. Okay? So we're going to go try to find uh, experiment three, which will be here. You see experiment three? You see how there's a purpose there? Wasn't that one of the items? Title and purpose? Okay, I'm gonna snip those. Just need that. For experiments after experiment one, getting your notebook ready is easy. Because all the parts, one to five, 
are in your textbook. Good. Book. So there's a purpose. Title purpose. You guys remember any other item? Don't need a discussion. Ah, components. That's like a reaction scheme. I'm studying these chemicals. Ah, data table. It's right, the, the table's right there. Look. Ah. Ah. That's, it's, I mean, it's just, it just got easier. Where's my snippy? Oh, I needed, ah. Oh, I needed those pictures. Yeah. Snippy. Come to me. Look at that. And we're bringing it over here now. I don't know if you see any of this when I go to Word. Basically, I was just copying and pasting all the snipping onto Word. And we'll go to stop share, closing comments. Uh, so this video told you how to get ready for experiment one and then future experiments for the semester. Uh, please feel free to revisit this video when you have questions. I know it's a long one.